Hi, head held high viewers, all three of you. I hope you're tuning in. Um, we've got a special treat for us. This is Tom Ward, who is a stand up comedian. Thanks for joining me today, Tom. Tash. That's all right, anytime. Um, so, Tom joins us on our stand up comedy course that we run with lots of young people and adults. And yeah, we're just here having a casual chat under a bonsai tree in Japan, aka Islington. Um, and right. here we are, Tom. So Tom, nice how to are you doing? I'm very well. I'm enjoying the sun. Yeah. So Tom, you've been working with us for about three years now. Yeah. And it's been fantastic having you on board. Um, could you just tell us, you know, in your own words, your sort of link between comedy and improving people's well-being, um, mental health, because we, we work a lot with um, the charity Mind at the moment and also young people with mental health issues. Obviously doing a stand-up comedy to help them bring out their confidence. The question is uh, the connection between comedy and mental health. Yeah, comedy and mental health. So I think comedy is very good for uh, therapy. Um, not just because you get to shout if you want to shout or be gutted or whatever about your life or complain about your wife if you have one but you can also just talk about anything you want and that's very good for people because people like to get stuff off their chest I found. so it's a kind of uh, a great release for people that I think otherwise may feel like they're going through stuff privately and don't have anyone to relate to or to relate with and then you, what's really nice about comedy is you get to go on stage and say stuff and people if they laugh, that means that they agree, or they f know how you feel, or they find it funny how you feel, and you go, oh, okay, cool, I'm not so alone. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, that can be for good news, bad news, you can be ranting about something awful that's happened, and then people are laughing, and that somehow makes it feel better, because it's now funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think it's, it's a really nice way to feel connected about any emotion that you have, Yeah. and to release it, so it's not just in your head rattling around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then people go, oh, I like that. And you go, oh, you as well. And then everyone, f and then you're commute, like you're having a like a communal feeling, agree agreement, it's like mm, a conversation. Mm. But it's not. Yeah. And was was there a definite moment where you decided, right, I need to do stand up comedy? Or was it that nobody was listening to you? Or did you have <laughs> did you have a similar experience to what you just shared, which is I need to get this stuff out? Uh, yeah, I definitely had loads of stuff that I was messed up about. And uh, I was in a band before and then I got kicked out of the band and I was like, I'd always thought I was going to be a front man in a band. And that had been my dream since I was about 15. And then, that, then I got kicked out of the band that I'd put together and I was so upset because I was like, I don't understand, I don't understand how this can happen. It's like being dumped. And, uh, and then I had to start to question whether I wanted to try and form a new band. Well, were you singing in the band? I was singing in the band, yeah. and, then, uh, and the lyrics were kind of, you know, uh, not that dissimilar to the stuff I do on do now. Um, and, uh, and I just, when I, when I got kicked out, I had to reconsider what I was going to do next. Do I want to put another band together? Do I want to solo? Do I want whatever the producer? So I tried to do it, but it wasn't happening. And someone just said, hey, do you want to come and do stand-up? I've just started doing stand-up. And I was like, all right, whatever. And I went down to the Cavendish Arms in Stockwell. Yeah. Did my first five minutes and um, it went okay. I basically bombed about 50 times in the first six months and was just like, if I got one laugh, I'd just listen to the audio and go, oh, there, look, it's one laugh. And I just focus on that and uh, just started to get hooked. And then about two years in, I really started committing to it. But the first couple of years, I was doing about one gig every week. Okay. So it wasn't like, uh, you know, I knew straight away and I knew before I did a gig, but it mm -hmm. just gradually I started to feel, yeah. And then people started to say very nice things and I was mm -hmm. like, okay. And when you get feedback from people and they tell you, oh yeah, this is very good. And you're yeah. Like, I really like you or whatever it is you're my favourite new comedian and stuff like that, you kind of go, okay, maybe this is, maybe I can do something. Do they still say to you, you're my favourite new comedian? No. You said I've been around for 10 years, thank yeah, you so yeah. much. Oh, well, I haven't heard of you. Oh, thanks, great. And and the feeling you, what's the feeling you get when you make a room of, um, you know, 500 people laugh or however many people, What does that feeling take you to the next day? Or is it, is it like a job now, like when you wake up the next day? It's a, uh, 
it's very like I get very high. Yeah. Good gig is like you know you're in the sky high. Um, but yeah, I guess by the next day it starts to just be normal because I've got another gig to worry about. So I can't just be going around. I mean, it, it just sort of happens. You feel amazing, but you've got another. You've always got another gig around the corner. And you never know what's going to happen with that gig and you can go from sky high to having a terrible gig the next night mm -hmm. or just a really flat gig yeah. so um you never really get to stay on the particular thing for long but it's good it's generally good but it's up and down in terms of you know one minute you're playing to 500 people the next minute you're playing to 10 people in a pub yeah trying you know doing some new stuff yeah and then if it goes well you feel amazing if it doesn't you feel pretty pretty rubbish but have you trained yourself i mean talking uh, you know on mental health as well like when you do feel like you've had a bad gig not that i can imagine that ever happens are you able to nip it in the bud like if you go 24 hours and you feel like your mood's low are you able yeah. to sort of observe and go okay i didn't feel that like great about that one but yeah I've got one next week definitely you, you kind of learn to just accept it uh, rather than focus on it because it's a waste of energy to just fixate on a bad gig. If they were all the time, then yeah, I'd probably, but you do have to kind of have a boundary and go, do you know what? I've done this, I've done this for 10 years and that was awful and I can probably see why. Yeah. I was maybe a bit harsh to someone in the first minute and then the rest of the room were like, oh, he's not very kind. <laughs> we won't be supporting you now. And they're really like that, aren't they? They if can be, they're very like, they can be a bit like that. If you're yeah. too harsh or you're, if you're a bit lazy or sloppy, you gotta be on it, man. Yeah. You gotta be on it. Yeah. And people don't realize that. They think, oh, you're just doing a thing. He's just funny. It's like, no, you gotta be really on it. And um, if they laugh, they love you. If they don't laugh, they hate you. So it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> or they don't like you or they don't care about you. But if they laugh, they're like, I love you. Yeah. And it's like, no, you don't. You're just happy that you laughed. <laughs> so you gotta just add salt to it. You don't. Yeah. It's not real. It's just all a kind of. All of, but it is an amazing connection when it's when it's happening. Mm. Sometimes even when they're not laughing, they can they can love you as well, which is strange. Yeah, well, I've seen you, and I've seen you take a moment where you're talking about something you feel quite strongly about, and they you, you know, you, you really need to get that out. And mm. I think that really shows a confident comedian yeah, where yeah. you're not obsessed with I've got to get a laugh every three seconds. No. I need to say this about um, climate change or whatever it was, and then yeah. move on to something. So do you, do you feel this is it? Like the next 50 to whatever years, stand up comedy? Hey, if I'm still doing comedy in 50 years, then then yeah, that, that would be amazing. And also I'd probably be the oldest comedian in the world. But <laughs> I, I don't know what the world's gonna be like in 50 years. Either we'll all be dead. Yeah. Or we'll all be middle-aged because the world is so scientifically advanced. That would be great. That, like, we'll be like cyborgs. Okay. We'll have like, you know, half half faces um, or something funnier than that. Well, that's a goal to have. Yeah. Half Good face. evening. Uh, um, but I don't know. If I'm still doing comedy uh, when I'm 80, 90, then brilliant. Yeah. Comedy's the best. It's not, I'm not trying to get anywhere else. You know, some people do comedy in order to become a TV presenter. I'm not. That's not really it for me. I'm just uh, stand up is the best thing in the world. So there's no other place I'm trying to get to. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. not a vehicle. So yeah. You fine. are there. I'm fine. Yeah. I'm happy. If this is it, I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah. Which is nice. Dream. Yeah, man. It's nice to feel that way because a lot of the time we uh, we're always worried about something else, aren't we? Where's this going? Where's this leading? What do you want from this? Yeah. What's next? And I'm like nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to go to a cafe and eat a cake. Yeah. That's what's next. And then I'm in the, eating the cake and I'm like, this is brilliant. I can't <laughs> believe it. There's a cake here that tastes nice. I'm so lucky. <laughs> so that's nice. Small things in life. Um, any comedians that inspire you or that you, you watch or you kind of over I just watch phase? videos of myself. Yeah, no, no of course. I thought <laughs> so. Um, I got into comedy because of Eddie Izzard yep. uh, and Vic and Bob watching Shooting Stars in the 90s and Ben Elton, I had a Ben Elton cassette mm. that I still have actually from 1989 and I used to listen to that on a Walkman and just walk along when I was in my 20s yeah. and just giving out, I, I was a flyer boy so I gave flyers through doors, it was a pretty bleak time 
but I had my cassettes and I'd listen to Joe Brand and, uh, and Billy Connolly and Ben Elton cassettes and then Eddie Izzard videos and then I was just like, whoa. And then so to do it, to do that, sometimes I did a gig recently at Shepherd's Bush Empire supporting someone and I felt out of body. I was like, oh my God, I've watched people on this stage. Mm -hmm. It was weird. I was like, mm -hmm. oh my God, I feel like I'm in a video that I'm watching of the people in the 90s. Mm -hmm. It was so surreal. So yeah, just those those lot. And I love Phil Kay. He's also a big, big legend yeah. from the 90s. He's still going, but he's kind of forced his own path away from television now. Mm -hmm. but yeah, they're my heroes. Yeah. No, you've got, got a good bunch there. Yeah. And I've, I've seen you perform, and yeah. I'm going to be honest, you do come across very smooth. You do have this very cool... <coughs> swag is probably not the right word, but you've got very cool, smooth way of, um, you know, delivery and just who you are. Yeah. Is that the true you? Are you really, are you feeling that when you're up there? Like once you've got that mic in your hand? I feel like maybe because uh, maybe my voice is quite relaxed, so it it's probably very sounds relaxed. yeah, it probably, <laughs> say, it probably sounds like I'm very relaxed, and I guess I am. But I'm also it's quite a stressful thing doing yeah. stand up. No matter how many gigs you do, you're always kind of in a, you're alert. You're very alert. You have yeah. to be because if you say the wrong thing, you can lose the room. Yeah. In a split second. Yeah. You, know, you get it wrong, the room can go, and you can you have to work really hard. So it's like an hour of intense. If I'm doing an hour, it's intense. Yeah. You have to be very focused, but I am quite relaxed. I'm not someone that's too much in my head at yeah. the moment. That's thank good. God. So thank, when the nerves thank kick, Prozac. <laughs> this is a, this is actually an advert for Prozac. Prozac. Um, for every stand-up comedian. Talk to your doctor about Prozac. But yeah, no, I do sound relaxed, and I and I do feel relaxed. But yeah. I am. I'm just con I'm concentrating on the thing. You know, you've got to be there. Yeah. You can't just ring it in. Is there a different? Is there a change in emotion? Like you said the other day, you do get nervous. Once yeah. you pick up that mic, once you say that line, where you get the laughter, you feel like okay, I've got them. Yeah, yeah, it does feel good when when you get that first laugh, but it doesn't mean anything. I mean, it doesn't mean you can just relax. You can yeah. Never relax. And it's like when you're a comedian, people have a, a different expectation to you than if you're in a band. Yeah. And if you're in a band and they've heard the song a thousand times, they love it. So I've had it where people have said, "Oh, I've heard that," you know, and it's like, "Well, what do you expect?" Yeah. Do you expect me to come on every night and do a, a new thing? It's like going up to Supergrass and saying, "Oh, I've heard, all right." <laughs> yeah, we know your teeth are nice and clean. What about the new one? It's like the opposite way around. They don't want to hear the new stuff. So you you never get to coast. No, no. And I, you don't want to coast either because if you're doing the same stuff again and again for 20 years, you're just going to be miserable. And yeah. you're going to be talking about something that isn't your life. Yeah now or you know what I mean and it's, it's changed you've got to... yeah no, of course that makes sense and would you have any sort of I don't know final tips for any young aspiring comedian or maybe just someone that just wants to give it a go for five minutes book themselves on an open mic night yeah I would say start start gently um, when you're starting something there's always this temptation to uh, to try and be an expert or to try and be as good as the people that you're you've been watching or that you're heroes you know? and that's the thing when you're new you're new and that's okay and it's good to just accept that you're new and um, give yourself permission to be rubbish for a while you know and don't be afraid of being rubbish because we're all rubbish when we try stuff um, and that's fun and that's good and that's a nice place to be is before everything gets real you get to be rubbish so go and do an improv class get used to messing up get used to making an idiot of yourself um, and uh, you know and you'll you'll find that it's, it's like free you'll, you'll feel more free when you allow yourself to just be crap and then gradually through doing it you start to feel better you'll start to feel who, you'll discover who you are on stage only by doing it. You can't prepare it. You can't. You'll never know what, who you are until you get on stage, and then, oh, this is who I am. And um, just yeah, go slow. Start gently. Go to a nice supportive comedy night, and uh, make it as soft and landing as possible, so that you don't go on stage and be like, oh, this is horrible. <laughs> don't do the Gong Show, for example, where they boo and hiss and make you feel bad go to a nice open mic night that's what i'd say give it a go you won't regret it 
Thank you. Wise words from a wise guy under a wise tree. Um, Tash. <laughs> <we'll talk. laughs> As the saying goes, a wise man under a wise tree. Yes, exactly. Um, well, look, thank you. It's lovely to have you on this show. I'm going to call it a show now. That's yeah, what it welcome is. Welcome to the Tash show. Yeah, yeah, why not? Maybe head held high. Let's not come across too narcissistic. Head held high TV. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you and we look forward to um, having you work with us as much as possible until you make it uber famous and I'll still pop that I'll still pop by with my hair transplant yeah and my sunglasses hi Tash oh <laughs> sweetie mm. oh yeah we did work together darling didn't we how are you you're looking fabulous you're looking very well darling <laughs> <laughs> and that's all going to be over Zoom. <laughs> yeah, um, I, won't be, I won't actually come here, obviously. No, no, don't yeah. stoop too Feel late. free to drop my agent an email and we'll try and sort something out. Thanks very much. Um, okay, so that's it for Tash and Tom. And thank you so much for talking to us and hopefully inspiring some young people out there to keep finding the laughter. So thank you. And old people. Oh, yeah. Old people are welcome. Yeah. Of course.